Um, Alan's, Alan's going to join us now. He's um, uh, ready to talk all things zombie portals. Yes, it's zombie time. Finally, hey, <laughs> it and here we are, zombies. Yeah, great, to, great to see you again, and um, uh, congratulations on your talks in Helsinki. They were fantastic at the last round, and I'm sure you're going to extend that with um, another um, uh, brutal, uh, fr brutal sort of uh, showing to today. Um, good timing too, around being around Halloween to be talking uh -huh. zombies. Exactly. exactly. Did that factor into it? Absolutely, of course. I thought about this in great detail and, and created a zombie Halloween theme. <laughs> you know, we're only what, four days away. So, oh, uh, clever. Okay, cool. So, uh, jump onto your slide deck and then press the hide button. Oh, yeah, it does that already. Yep. Okay, great. I'll leave you to it. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Max. Cheers for you in a bit. Okay. So, uh, I'm Alan Kanabe. And uh, I'm here to t speak to you today about uh, zombies or zombie developer portals. So, as I said, um, so I'm an API product manager. I've been API product manager for about five years or so now. Uh, and I co-founded a um, company recently called API Able. Um, and we, we basically are into API portals and API products, that kind of thing. Um, I've been working for about 20 years now for some large organizations and more recently on the API side of things at Swisscom, where we, we had a very, very successful program. And uh, more recently, Connor as well, where um, we also kicked off an API program and that's uh, really picking up some good pace at the moment. Um, before I start, I'd like to just say, okay, why why did I um, quit my day job at Connor uh, and decide to start this company? Um, it, it basically started in the summer of last year. I was speaking to the chief digital officer of a um, large Nordic bank. And I thought, okay, I'm, I'm preaching to the converted here. Uh, this guy is going to be all over APIs. Uh, and so I, I was, you know, waxing lyrical about, you know, how APIs will save mankind from zombies, et cetera. And uh, after he listened to it for a while. And then he said, you know what, Alan, you know, I've heard this a uh, thousand times before, but at the end of the day, um, I'm yet to see any tangible results from the API program. Right, so we've been putting in, you know, X hundred thousands, millions into these API programs, but uh, he hasn't seen any results. So that made me really stop and think. Okay, you know, I'm used to, you know, working on API programs that have been like successful, but uh, are we are we not getting it right in all cases? Um, and and what can we do better? So we come back to the starting point of what did we actually promise, right? So on the more internal focus, you've got digital transformation. Right, about speeding up the organization, cutting down project times, uh, getting information to where it needs to be around the organization. On, on the other side, you know, opening up new revenue streams for the organization. Um, a lot of companies have been disrupted, especially our telco business, banks, that kind of thing. So really getting out new products um, that, that didn't exist before. Um, so these are the kind of things that, that we promised. Um, and we're really starting to look now at, okay, how do we actually like, deliver on this and quickly? Because speed is uh, you know, of the essence. So our mission is to prove that guy wrong, um, but you can't really put that on a website. So our other mission is empower API-led organizations to realize their true potential. So it's about getting an API program, getting it up to speed quickly, um, and, and to start delivering results, right? That's what's required nowadays, and that's what, what we all need, right? Uh, and the strategy uh, at this point in time is to say, okay, API portals, because what you get out of the box, to be honest, is, is like half finished. So in a lot of cases, you have the, the uh, API management software, and it will come bundled with something as an afterthought, some kind of developer portal, but you have to do a lot of work to get it like up and running. Um, and it can be like half a year or a year before you actually have a working portal. We also concentrate on the API products part of it. Uh, we bake that into the portal so that you're actually delivering API products. So let's move on to like, how do you spot a zombie developer portal? Uh, and what do we mean by uh, a zombie developer portal? Well, let's play this game called Spot the Zombie, right? Um, to play this, basically, you're going to uh, get a 
domain, your, the domain of your, your company organization at the moment, and you prepare the developer dot to it, right? Don't do this now, do this after the presentation. Um, or you can use like something else out there, you know, McDonald's or Coca-Cola or BMW or, or whatever, right? You're, you're gonna develop a dot to it, and then you're gonna take a look at it. Um, what we find a lot of the time is that if it's gone zombie, meaning that no one looks after it anymore. Uh, the design doesn't really match the branding, right? You, you, you can see that the main .com site, maybe the branding has moved on, um, different logos, et cetera, but sometimes you find developer portals with quite old uh, logos and, and, and it's just not quite up to, up to scratch. So that's a good sign that it's gone zombie. Um, also the, the concept of API as a product did exist, um, you know, five plus years ago, uh, we were just doing APIs and throwing stuff up and expecting people to kind of be able to understand what it is. So if there's no products, that's also probably a good sign. If it's difficult to get started, yeah, it, it's also one of these cases where we, we didn't really understand, okay, how to, um, how to get people going with APIs quickly. You know, in the last uh, um, presentation we saw, okay, there's some really cool tools out there now getting started, but um, yeah, it can be that that's not the case. And my favorite is that when you see, okay, there's a series of blog posts, like 10 blog posts when the API program is fresh and everyone's really excited and they're trying to get developers involved, but they don't come. Um, and there's a reason for that. We'll dig into some of those details now. Uh, but first, okay, just to stop and say, well, why do you want to build an API portal anyway? I, I think it's, um, well, as, as we've seen here at digital.swisscom.com, it's absolutely necessary to have an API uh, portal, a great API portal. Um, and that's coming from Sasha Führer. So he, he's someone I used to work for and I interviewed him recently and said, okay, well, how did it go over the last couple of years? And they really took the concept of the developer portal, they use it internally, externally, and they've really grown it into like this ecosystem now. It's a fantastic thing to, to study and uh, feel free to get in touch with Sasha if, if you wanna hear more about that. Um, moving on to the antidote then. So this is really part of, okay, you've got these zombie portals and, uh, and what can you do about it? So know thy customer, right? Who is your customer? It seems pretty uh, simple in our case. We just say, okay, it's a developer, right? The famous developers, developers, developers from Steve, right? Um, you would be forgiven for building a developer portal and concentrating on developers and putting it out there as developer. But if we look at a definition of, okay, who's a customer? Uh, a customer is someone who pays for your product. A user does not. So, so here we see if you, if you have like an API product, especially if you're monetizing these things, right? You really have to stop and think about who is your customer. And it could well be that the developer is not your target customer. So if you're like Twilio, for example, Stripe, whatever, one of these, you know, very successful um, API led companies, um, in that case, it could well be that your developer is your customer. However, um, not for all organizations. The last couple of organizations I worked with, actually the customer is, is someone that they already knew. So the customer who was like signing contracts, paying for the thing were, was more of a business user, right? And what I found is that if you don't include them in your, in your flow, then you're missing out. And it could well be that you're taking, you know, more like months to onboard a, a new organization to your APIs because you're having to do a lot of stuff manually in the background. So what we do within APIables portal, uh, we, we have really, you know, these different roles that we're, we're playing with at the moment to say, okay, uh, on the one hand, you know, you can have a very business centric role where you, you don't want to be bombarded with more technical details. You want to see, okay, what's the value of the uh, API product, or, you know, you can just call it a digital product, but you don't want to actually get into the implementation details. On the flip side, you know, we still love our developers and we want to have a fantastic developer experience. Um, the developers aren't so interested in all of the marketing fancery, right? They want to they have, um, they want to see the APIs to what they've got access and they want to start using it as soon as possible. So, so we really have this like, you know, roles that people can select and, um, and then move forward on. 
So next step is, uh, you know, productization. You've got to productize this stuff. If you haven't heard of API as a product by now, you've been living under a rock, right? So API products um, are, are what it's all about, uh, using established product management tools and techniques, right? So product management has been around for a long time now, right? Uh, you know, Kellogg's cereal, one of the first products, I guess, uh, Ford motor cars, you know, these are examples of products. And we're very, very, very good at uh, creating products, consuming products, selling products, right? And there's no point having the best API pool in the world if you've got nothing to put on it, right? So really having fantastic API products and putting them on there. Um, a good case as well is to say, you know, we did this at, at Swisscom and, you know, I think the guys are now pushing it at Connor as well as to say, okay, create internal products too. So again, it can be that your target audience is, you know, project management, business analysts, these kind of like roles that are maybe not so technical, having an internal product that explains the value of the, you know, data basically behind it. You're maybe not monetizing it, but you're, you're, you're basically going to use the, um, product management as a vehicle to, to deliver value, right? So it's about this value proposition and getting it out to the uh, customer. And don't use projects. Uh, if you're using a project, then uh, you're gonna be in trouble because a project kind of stops at some point and whatever you deliver at that point is delivered. And on an API program, it can be that you're left uh, babysitting an API for you know three, four years uh, where the project doesn't exist anymore. And you know no one really cares about it, whereas a product endures. Um, and really, you know, especially if you come from more the technical side uh, on an API program, speaking to customers and, it, you know, understanding their pain points is, is the first thing you have to do, right? Even if it's, you know, outside of your comfort zone, speaking to customers is something you're just going to have to do. And I'll give you a quick sort of uh, insight into um, how or what you should be doing in terms of developing, uh, you know, API products. We, we've got here this um, matrix for originally from Igor Ansoff. Um, and, and here you've got like transformational products. These are things that um, are disruptive maybe that don't yet exist in your industry. We're talking about banking. It's, it's like really disruptive stuff that hasn't really been thought out properly yet. You've got adjacent products which sit next to your core banking products. So these are you know, your, your bank accounts and your payment services. These are existing core services where you make your money. So um, first things first, Ignore this transformational part in the beginning. I know it's cool and that's where you want to be working, but you'll probably fail. Uh, majority of startups fail and, and so will you. Um, core. Um, also, don't get too bogged down in core. If you've got a core product and you're trying to digitize it, uh, it could be that you're going to end up in uh, lots of project management meetings uh, and, well, that's your life over, basically. Then you become a zombie. Uh, adjacent, this is where you want to be. You want to be in this kind of se section here. You're enhancing a core product, right? So you speak to existing customers of the core product. You find out their pain points. And you come up with API products which solve those pain points we're, we're using this, this cool digital thing we have called an API. So that's just a quick uh, tip on uh, what to think of. Next up is reducing friction, right? So when you have uh, an API portal, I, I say quite a lot when I look at them, it's not always obvious what you want the user of the API portal to even do. If you look at like an e-commerce store, it's always very clear what, what they want you to do. They want you to buy stuff and there's big buttons and they're green and it's like click here uh, and there's very little um, resistance. There's no friction. You just go through it you know, to your credit card and you've paid for it, right? Um, and here on your developer portal, if you go and have a look at it after this presentation uh, and just with a fresh set of eyes say, okay, what, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing on this portal? Is it clear and is it frictionless in, in that case? Um, another one is that it takes days to get access to your APIs, right? So I'm quite old already, so I don't mind waiting for things, right? Um, 
if I think back to you know television programs when I was growing up, I would quite happily wait one week for uh, the next episode of whatever to come up. So uh, on a Tuesday afternoon, me and my friends would say, okay, it's Red Dwarf tonight, great. And we'd all watch it at home. And then we'd wait one more week for it to come. Uh, I try to explain that concept to my children. They don't get it, right? So if you're dealing with like, you know, Generation Z and millennials, um, they don't understand this concept. They just look at you like you've gone crazy. Like, don't be silly. I'll just go to Netflix and watch the next one. They have no concept of, uh, you know, uh, waiting for, for something to arrive. And, and this is the way that we're all going now as well. We, we expect instant access to things. We want to sign up. We want access now. We don't want to be stuck in some queue because someone's on vacation for two weeks. Um, if it's not there in one minute, then, then it's gone. So what can you do to reduce friction, right? Um, restart, you know, with your current uh, user journey. Say, okay, um, again, you know, what's your call to action? When you click the buttons, uh, where is it getting stuck? Um, also, if there's um, a non-developer within the user journey, so it's more of a business person who has to sign a contract or authorize something, you know, um, can you start to automate that process? and walk through the organizational policies before you go live. I have had it before where you finally get a customer who wants to use the API, but then you're blocked because one part of the organization says, no, you don't, you can't actually have access to that data. I just thought you were playing with it. Uh, so you need to get through all that politics before you go live and say that you're serious. Uh, get security approval at the product level. But it's mean that, you know, you really baked it into the product so that you have plans, small, medium, large, and they say, okay, what data is available in each plan, for example, um, and, and get the security approval for that in advance. Uh, also, you know, touching on that a little bit as well, saying if you're more on the business side, um, you, you, you can effectively lock that uh, user in so they can access their own assets already. So if it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a fleet of cars or something like this, that, that those people can see those cars and say, okay, I want to apply this digital product to these 10 cars in this case, or something like this, right? To really eat your own dog food, use your own APIs to build that into your API portal. And yes, have everything automated ultimately, but you know, start where you can and start to reduce friction as soon as possible. More zombies, uh, in this case, uh, getting secure, right? So you're still scared quite a lot by GDPR, right? I mean, we all are, right? I don't think anyone's been like massively stung by it yet, but we're still scared by GDPR. And then generally speaking, you know, the, the data of our uh, customers and employees uh, and this kind of thing. Now, what we can do is we can see GDPR as an opportunity, not a threat. This is what Swisscom did. So, so the team at Swisscom said, okay, how can we really like turn this around? So they took the API portal that they have and they baked into it this whole onboarding process of making things more secure. So if you're a part of the organization that's not a core part of the uh, API program, you could effectively come and you had a service where you're, um, you could expose data in a very, very secure way and the team would help you with that and also put it onto the marketplace, et cetera. Um, you need to work with the security team to prove that you've understood the uh, data baking it into your products again really at this like core product level so that there's no surprises in the organization when certain people have access to the data it's there within your product and don't reinvent the wheel i i've worked on projects where we spent six months talking about security um, but all of the tools you need to like get the job done they're already there they're working for everyone uh, go ahead and use them. Curity is a fantastic company that um, I've had the pleasure of doing some work with. Their product is very complicated, but also very, very good. And, it, and they have the answers to all of your security problems. So this is basically it then. Know your customers, productize stuff, reduce as much friction as you can, and you know get secure out of the box. Uh, and this will hopefully mean that you don't um, have any zombie problems. So we're working at the moment on a next gen API portal, uh, in case you didn't guess. Uh, there is a demo available, so you can um, 
speak to me. My contact details are um, at the end of this presentation. So there is an existing um, demo portal that I can take you through. So you can see some of these concepts working in real life. Or technology agnostic, you can have uh, any of the trendy um, API management gateways that are out there. You can have multiple as well, because yes, you have more than one, we know it. Uh, identity provider integration, so we'll integrate with Azure or Salesforce identity or, or whatever you have, basically. Again, you saw those roles that are there. We have roles-based uh, controls, uh, and it's like a marketplace concept with subscriptions, et cetera. That's uh, what we have. And um, yeah, well, feel free to get in touch. APIable.io is, is the website. And uh, like I said, I'm a bit old, so you can also call me as well. Uh, or if you're a bit younger, then you can always, you know, WhatsApp me and so on. That's fantastic. Thanks, Alan. You can, um, uh, you could sort of do, I think the younger generation now, what they do is you'll be, they send you the voice message texts over WhatsApp. Yes, I get those from my daughter all the so time, and I have no idea what she's talking about. Then I sort of sound it out. I'm like, ah, oh, now I get it. I know what she wants now. <laughs> so asynchronous uh, communications everywhere. The okay, that's that was fantastic presentation, uh, and I love the tie-in. It must have been a lot of fun having the zombie theme throughout the whole deck as well. <laughs> yeah, I tried as much as possible. Uh, Next time great. there'll be more. <laughs> Sure. The, it doesn't look like there's any questions in the chat. Well, tell us when when's your um, API portal prototype going live? Okay, so we, we already have like the prototype. We have a demo and it, it, it's a functional um, prototype. It works. It's got Congress at back end. Um, we can go ahead and, and, and walk you through it. Um, and then we're, we're sort of working on the next iteration of that which is basically, you know, it's all containerized in one Docker container, meaning that we can deploy it uh, on demand. Uh, so build like with React. Um, and uh, it's very cool, actually. I, I like what the guys are doing, the developers there. Um, and that's that's coming soon. What, what I don't want to do is just build something that comes all from me. I would like, a, you know, a customer to co-create this with. Um, so there we get some input and say, okay, that we don't just have like just my vision. We have also what the customer wants into it as well. So if you're looking to build an API portal, then, then let's have a conversation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a great way to start that conversation. You put up your contact details earlier and uh, people can start with like, walk me through this prototype, you know, and then exactly. walk me through the demo. It's a really great starting point. And then to have that conversation. So I hope um, some of the viewers uh, take you up on that offer. Um, okay, we've got to finish up on time. So we're, if everyone now moves back to the main stage, we'll be able to have the closing remarks and the showcase in the Appathon finalists. But thanks, Alan, for um, ending on such a strong note for this for today's technical stage. Thanks, Mark. And, thank, thank, and thanks all of our speakers today. And we'll close up now and see you over in the main stage. Cheers.